going on guys? I wanted to make a follow-up video to the uh, prototype video that I showed you recently on these scissors and uh, just go over a couple of things that I've done since that video and uh, just a couple of talking points on the scissors and how they've been working for me and then uh, I may spend a couple of minutes towards the end of the video just talking about a uh, possible production run and uh, what I'm thinking of there. So uh, first of all uh, the sheath has been breaking in very nicely I know I mentioned in the last video that it was kind of hanging up on the bottom, kind of hard to pull out. Uh, whatever that was that was hanging it up uh, has smoothed out very nicely and uh, it really doesn't hang up uh, very much at all anymore. So uh, just a couple of fingers, a light pull, and they're ready to go. Uh, still plenty secure, uh, no danger of them falling out, but again, uh, just a real quick pull and they're ready to go. And uh, they will go in any direction. Uh, frontwards, backwards, it doesn't matter uh, as they are symmetrical on both sides. So uh, it's real nice if you're fishing, maybe you got your hands full or you got to cut something real quick. Cut what you need to and then pop them back in. Uh, now as far as putting them back in the sheath, uh, they will go in in the open position. They do kind of close themselves. Uh, you just kind of got to line the points up uh, in the opening. I don't know how well that'll show up. And uh, then it kind of finds its own way and closes up nicely in the sheath. And uh, I think that little bit of spring tension kind of helps retain them in the sheath as well. So uh, very happy with that. Uh, very convenient to access, use, and then put away. Now uh, the other thing I did since the last video was I went ahead and deburred the corners. Uh, which is something I should have done in the first place, but uh, they were kind of sharp and I uh, actually did cut my hand uh, trying to pull it out of the sheath the first time. Uh, caught a burr on the end of that, so I went ahead and deburred that. Uh, took it over to the buffer for a little bit and uh, also ended up adding my maker's mark, my name and the steel type, and then the AR logo uh, just to kind of personalize them. And then uh, finally, I added a drop of super glue to the screw here as it was kind of backing out after a lot of heavy cutting. It kind of bind up on the blade there and uh, start working itself loose. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, I would like to have used some blue Loctite instead, but I cannot find mine. So uh, super glue does just about the same thing uh, nearly as effectively. So uh, they're pretty much uh, finished. And uh, overall, I'm very happy with how they turned out and how well they uh, are working. Now, one thing I will mention, uh, especially for anyone who may up, end up getting a pair uh, similar to these in the future, uh, like any pair of scissors, the blades can wedge apart on you if you're cutting something a little on the heavier side, like this paracord, and I'll kind of purposely run them apart. Uh, anybody that's used scissors before, I'm sure you've had this happen where something's just a little bit too thick or too hard, hit it at a wrong angle, and uh, the blades wedge apart and it doesn't cut it. Uh, that's really probably not very avoidable, especially uh, with this type of design. But a real quick and easy solution for that, uh, like any pair of scissors, is just put a little bit of lateral force or loading on the blades uh, just to kind of hold them together a little tighter. And uh, as you can see, they work exactly as they should every time. And uh, it's really not a lot of pressure at all. You really don't even notice it. Uh, just kind of a technique to get used to. And uh, then the other way that could happen, maybe if you got something bunched up, uh, trying to cut through multiple layers or something, I kind of try to do it on purpose here. Again, you can kind of wedge them apart. Uh, just putting a little bit of force on those cuts right through no problem so uh, just something to keep in mind uh, it's really not a defect of the scissors or that they can't cut something uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, forethought and uh, adjustment on technique and uh, really it's quite natural and uh, not a big deal so uh, not to make this video too much longer but just to give some real brief thoughts on a production run uh, I am currently crunching some numbers and uh, trying to figure out what kind of materials and uh, different things I want to do for these. And uh, right now, uh, I'm 
pretty well decided that I'm going to use a slightly larger pivot. Uh, this one's 3 16 so I'll probably go with a quarter. And uh, that'll maybe help the uh, wedging apart just a little bit. Uh, having a little bit bigger bearing and bigger pivot on that that I can crank down and uh, put a little bit more force uh, where the pivot's at. Uh, but also it's just going to be uh, maybe a little bit more durable and uh, longer lasting. Uh, not that I expect this to wear out anytime soon, but if you can go bigger, why not? Uh, the other thing I might change is the size of the spring. Uh, although I do really like the action. Uh, it feels really natural, really good. Uh, I do have some thicker wire uh, that's slightly thicker than this coming in the mail uh, that I may try out as well. Uh, this works just fine, but again, why not uh, try it out see what happens. Uh, as far as the material, uh, again, these are 1095 high carbon. Uh, you do have to oil them, wipe them down uh, to keep them from rusting. Uh, I'll probably end up going with the stainless, uh, though looking at the different tool steels and uh, especially the CPM steels that I was uh, thinking about possibly using, uh, the prices on the materials just really cost prohibitive and uh, not only that but uh, stuff like D2 is a lot harder to uh, drill machine and work with and uh, I'm really trying to keep the price as uh, low on these as I can uh, so that anybody who wants one can afford a pair so uh, instead of going with something like a CPM uh, tool steel or uh, some a little bit more exotic or expensive. Uh, I think I've decided to go with some AEBL. Uh, it's actually a very good steel, uh, very suitable for knife making. Uh, it takes a very fine edge, uh, it hardens well, and uh, it's got a very fine grain. So uh, I think it'll be uh, just as good as this 1095 or really anything else I can use uh, for the application. And uh, the nice thing about it, ABL is it is a little bit more affordable. Uh, it's a little bit closer to a carbon steel price as opposed to uh, the CPM or tool steel prices. And uh, should be every bit as good and uh, functional as anything else. Uh, now that being said, if I do go with ABL, I will have to outsource the heat treat. And uh, that will cost a little bit extra. Uh, the hardware on this uh, isn't cheap. Uh, each pivot's a few dollars, the bearings are a couple dollars, and uh, all that adds up. So uh, just to make one pair, or even 30 or 40 pairs, the price uh, is pretty much the same uh, per piece, and a little bit higher than I would maybe have thought initially. But uh, again, crunching all the numbers and uh, kind of making a guess at what the water jet guy is going to come back on, uh, the price for these will probably be around $80. Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But uh, to make it worth my while and my time and my investment, uh, I really can't go much lower than that. And uh, believe it or not, the uh, overhead and the price just to make a pair of these uh, is really probably quite a bit more than most people would think. And uh, I know these probably look simple, like there's not a lot of material or a lot to it, uh, but really there is a pretty considerable investment here, uh, not only just in the time and uh, the effort to get these together and working correctly, uh, but just in the materials, the hardware, uh, the sheath and everything else. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking on price. Uh, that may change uh, for better or for worse uh, between now and when I do get some ready to sell. Uh, but just to kind of keep you guys in the loop, anyone who might be interested in a pair, uh, that's going to be probably about the best I can do. And again, the price really wouldn't change uh, too much for the better if I made 100 of them or just uh, 10 or 20 of them. Uh, you might save a couple bucks here doing more, but uh, I think starting off I'll do maybe a smaller run, maybe 20 or 30 pairs and uh, see how they do. Uh, seems like I've gotten a fair amount of interest so far. Uh, I'm actually going to send this off uh, to my father-in-law. He's very interested in maybe ordering a run of them uh, for the company he's with. And uh, he's going to kind of show these off, see if there's any interest there. Uh, 
and uh, we'll kind of see what comes of that. Uh, I do have some interest uh, coming up on some Facebook groups and some forums. So uh, I'm definitely going to be taking this forward if I can. Uh, it will be just a little bit more time though, uh, given the financial investment uh, needed to be made. And then of course just getting everything finalized, uh, bill of materials drawn up. Uh, final drafts for water jet and uh, logistics for all of that. So uh, again, that's kind of where I'm at on everything. Uh, maybe that answered some questions. Maybe there weren't any questions. But uh, I do appreciate the uh, feedback I've gotten. I uh, appreciate the views. And uh, if you guys think you might be wanting a pair of these, uh, stay tuned. I'm working on it. And... Uh, Start saving your pennies. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you.